Okay, so we're here with Tats in the Korg Berlin hut. Hey, man. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, I'm Tats from Korg Berlin. Uh, we're a subsidiary of Korg. We're pretty new. We're just about under three years old, and uh, we haven't shown anything to the world yet, but uh, we're really excited today at Superbooth because we're going to go public with what we've been working on. And uh, the thing we've been working on is the acoustic synthesis which is based on these uh, metal resonators. So we, um, we've designed these resonators to, have to contain frequencies that we think um, are nice. And when you move a resonator, much like you would, against, uh, you would a ruler against a desk, it bobs up and down. But to the eye, it's not obvious that the movements are much more complex than that. So the bobbing up and down is actually the fundamental. It gives you the sense of pitch. In this case, this is a C2 note, which is 65.4 hertz and it does this, bobs up and down. But there's more going on. So above that fundamental, we have the first overtone at about 170 hertz, and this one looks like this. So you can see the two arms moving in antiphase. There's more, there's a second overtone, which is more like a, a wave traveling down the length of the resonator. The third overtone is really crazy. You can see it bending and twisting. And there's more. And the thing is, they're all happening at the same time in a single resonator. This is also oh wrong one. Uh, this is the combined, which shows the complexity of the movements as all of these modes happen within that single resonator. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to harness these different modes which create the sonic character of the resonator and use it as part of a sound generation uh, technique. So how do we move these resonators? We actually use an electromagnetic system. Uh, we use a balanced armature system here which actually strikes the resonator much like the hammer in a, in a, in a piano. And uh, instead of a hammer, we use uh, electromagnetic forces and we send a pulse and we get this resonator to, to start moving. And after that, we need to pick up what the movement is. And we actually use these capacitive pickups. This is just one half of what we're using. And it's actually uh, some electrodes below and above the resonator. And much like in a condenser microphone, where you have a diaphragm moving against uh, a plate held at the voltage, um, these uh, are held at 50 volts. And instead of a diaphragm, we have the resonators themselves. So as these move, uh, against these plates, uh, we can pick up uh, all the different harmonics. And the trick here is that we've got very uh, specific uh, geometries of these plates so that we can listen into all the beautiful tones uh, that this resonator is making according to the shapes of the modes that we just saw in these flipbooks. And up to that point, it's pretty much an acoustic system with pickups, so we're just hitting it and we're listening. And the synthesis part of it comes in when we use the signals that we pick up and we feed it into a feedback control system. So we can do things like, OK, we can uh, manipulate the fundamental and keep it going, sustain the fundamental, and let the other modes die off naturally. Or we can say, oh, we want more of the first overtone that we saw, and uh, we, can, we can sustain that as well. We can do the opposite as well. We can say, OK, the fourth overtone, we don't want that. So we inject the energy back into the system in antiphase in order to damp that mode. So we can access all of these different frequencies that are, that are happening in this single resonator and treat them uh, as you would do in a conventional synthesizer. So like using sort of phase cancellation to like regenerate them. Exactly. So if they're in phase, it will, it will sustain it. If it's in antiphase, it will dampen it. So That's we can do man. both, which means we can modulate them uh, with LFOs. We could put different EGs on the different uh, modes. So it really turns this very simple acoustic system uh, into a synthesizer. Amazing. Sounds good. Yeah, so we can see it in action here. We don't actually have a product on show today. We actually have a very early prototype demonstrating uh, the technology, and uh, Lucas can, uh, can demonstrate uh, what this prototype can do. So, um, hello, my name is uh, Lucas, also from Korg Berlin, and I'm just going to run you through um, this kind of early prototype um, of this acoustical synthesis that we're showing today. So uh, in front of me, we have our acoustic synth um, phase five. So there's obviously been a few more research, research phases um, before this. 
But as you can see, um, Tatsu took you through the way it works, but um, we have the drivers at the front here, and um, we've got the pickups um, sitting along the top, and in between them we have these resonators, and these resonators form the entire sound that this um, synthesizer makes. So whenever we're listening to sounds from the synthesizer, we're always getting the direct, um, direct signal from the pickups themselves. So I'm going to run you kind of through some of the kind of modulation and some of the um, parameter crawl that we've been playing around with in this prototype. So in its kind of first mode, uh, we are in what we call acoustic mode. So in acoustic mode, we uh, treat this synthesizer very much uh, like an acoustic instrument. We basically send a signal, a single pulse um, to the resonators and we allow them to just um, die off naturally or kind of ring out naturally. So you can hear what this might sound like. And so you can hear we have these kind of natural transient overtones which are just dying out. I, in acoustic mode, I can play around with the release. So this is essentially a VCA on the output. And so we can dial in how much of this kind of natural decay we have in the instrument. So if I turn it up, we have these long decays. And if I tighten it back in, we got these short percussive sounds. And this is really nice because even in acoustic mode, we kind of get a sense for how alive this instrument is. If I turn up the release the whole way and start to play a whole range of notes, we get this very wet signal and it sounds basically like a reverb. And it is a reverb. So what we're getting is a whole complex array of intermodulation between the resonators. So you can imagine if I press this one key, there's all these vibrations which are getting sent throughout the instrument and we can pick those up at the pickups themselves. Fantastic. So now we're in acoustic mode. Um, but when we really get into this idea of modulation and synthesis, we switch the um, instrument into synth mode. And now we have this feedback system engaged. So now we have complete control over the way the resonators behave and uh, um, the way it moves. So not only its fundamental, but also its overtones. So in this case, um, with the overtones turned down, if I play a note, you can hear that I have complete sustain. So this is already what kind of sets us apart from an acoustic instrument, where you only have this initial supply of energy. Here, we can completely, continuously supply um, a driving current to the magnets and keep the note going. If we start to dial in the overtones, you hear all these beautiful kind of electronic or kind of mechanic sounds that are coming from the resonators themselves as we dial in the kind of energy into these frequency bands. And so this was really important to us that we also kind of really represent the sounds of the resonators themselves. We don't want to color the signal afterwards, but we want it to sound like the metal that's in these instruments. And so now that, now that we have this kind of level of control, we can obviously modulate these parameters. So if we start to introduce this LFO, we can hear how we get these kind of swinging kind of movement in the LFO, in the um, overtones themselves. And is the LFO affecting all of the different harmonics, all of the overtones? Exactly. So in, in this instrument, we've kind of grouped them together. We have the uh, fundamental is just being continuously sustained, and then the overtones are being modulated by the LFO. Um, but this is absolutely just dependent on the kind of instrument we're trying to create. We could also individually modulate each overtone signal. We could be doing things like arpeggiating between them. We could oh, so there's cool. like a whole kind of complex array of kind of controls that we can introduce to the system and it's yeah, very much just dependent on what instrument we're trying to make. Hmm. Do you think, is it something that you could bow maybe? Could you use a bow with it to, to resonate it? You could, absolutely. I mean, there's a, a whole kind of variety of ways you could kind of inject energy into the system and it's something we definitely want people to do with these instruments. So as, I, as an example, this isn't a bow, this is just my finger, but you can hear if I play this note, say in acoustic mode. I can actually start to interact with the resonator itself and it's kind of maybe this idea of like a prepared piano or something like that. So you could be placing objects on the resonators to kind of change the tuning effects. You could be, um, I don't know, even in this case, if I bend it up and down, I can change the kind of tension that the resonator is under and we can change the pitch of the resonators themselves. So absolutely, we really definitely want people to kind of get in there and get a sense of how um, these objects are moving and to kind of get a 
build this almost like a relationship with your instrument. Right. Yeah, I'm thinking of maybe like rice, just mm -hmm. you know, having some sprinkle some rice. Yeah, on it or, yeah, yeah. Or you could could have a like a connected piece which has different things. Uh, to like textural things to mm -hmm. just add on over here, which will yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, different ways of interacting. Exactly. With. I mean, that, that's the idea. Or I think um, we were talking yesterday also about like maybe kind of longer wires that would connect all the resonators, so you really get this kind of like connection between the sounds. But um, I think this is something we really want to leave open, just so like people can experiment it. Um, I think this is kind of what make this makes this really exciting. Excellent. And what's the what's the sort of roadmap for this? Though? I mean, it's going to be an amazing instrument, whatever you do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Do you have any plans to? Yeah. What's the roadmap? Um. So this is a really honest snapshot of kind of where we are now. Um. Obviously, we have a huge interest in getting this out and getting this to people, but um. Yeah, these things take time. So I think this is a really honest snapshot of where we are now, and I think those are kind of the next steps. Like, how do we get this out there? Great. Well, thank you so much for showing us. It's great yeah. to see this. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you.